Well, hello folks, it's Darwin. And today I wanna to share some of my tips and tricks about traveling with gear, specifically flying to the start of an adventure with your gear, both domestically and internationally. Over the past eight years of making a ton of content here on YouTube about through hiking and bike packing, backpacking, and even adventuring abroad, I've gotten a ton of questions from folks wanting to know how I get to the start of my adventures and specifically the logistics of flying with things like trekking poles and, and tent stakes and little knives and even full on bike setups. Well, since I'm about to take off on some international trips this summer for both bike packing and backpacking trips, I felt like now is a perfect time after all these years to make a video talking about some of the tips and tricks uh, with the logistics of traveling with some of these items that I've learned over the years. Now, I feel like one of the most common questions that I've gotten and that I see about traveling with gear is specifically about things like trekking poles or tent stakes or anything that can be kind of considered stabby or uh, used as a weapon on a plane. Now, the most logical way to get around any of this is simply by checking all of your gear at security. Taking all of your stuff, putting it in your pack, maybe putting it in some sort of an outer bag and then checking it so it's under the plane. And I've actually only done this one time in all of my travels and that was in 2019 when I went to Scotland. I actually brought my pack on board with me along with my other gear and stored it in the overhead bin as my carry-on. But a bunch of us that went together took our tent stakes, our trekking poles, even our trowels, and checked it all in together in one cheap duffel bag. We paid one price, it got put under the plane, and when we got there, all of our stuff was together, no problem. Now, with that being said, my actual pack and all of my gear that was in it was small enough to bring as a carry-on and store in the overhead bin, but if you have a larger pack, obviously, that's not an option and you're gonna have to check it and figure out how to put it all together and put it in some sort of a safe bag so it doesn't get damaged. Now, I'm not gonna go into the logistics of that because honestly, I've only done it one time, but there are a ton of great videos here on YouTube with other folks explaining the, the best practices and the best ways to travel and check your gear in. But if you're like me and you hate checking bags, you wanna keep it simple, you wanna keep everything with you, or maybe your pack is small enough to use as a carry-on and you don't wanna pay that extra fee to check your stakes and your trekking poles, what do you do? Well, over the last handful of years, doing a lot of backpacking trips and hiking trips, I've done a lot of different things, but I would say about 99% of the time, I actually ship my gear, yep. I put all of my stabby things, so again, my trekking pole, my stakes, my little knife, uh, my trowel, anything that I think would be considered a weapon, I put it in a box and I ship it to myself. Something that I've become very familiar with over the last eight years of doing through hikes are resupply boxes. When you're out there on a trail and you wanna send yourself some food, well, before you go, you put together resupply boxes. You take all your food, you put it in a box, or maybe it's even gear, and you ship it to different locations on the trail. Whether it's a post office, or maybe a hostel or a hotel that will accept packages, and you pick it up along the way. I've actually done a video on resupply boxes and how I label them and what I put in them and where I send them and how I send them. I'll put it up here somewhere, up here, or I'll leave it down below if you wanna check that out. But in 2020, I started doing the exact same thing with my gear. So for me, it's as easy as doing something like getting one of these flat rate shipping boxes. Sometimes all my stuff will fit in one of these. Sometimes I have to get a bigger box. I take my trekking pole and I break it down to a smaller size. I fit everything in the box and I send it to the start of my trip. Whether it's to a post office, to a friend, or maybe it's to a business that will accept packages. A lot of hotels will actually accept packages for 
their guest. Now, the exception to this is something like fuel or bear spray. I never ship stuff like that, and please don't ship hazardous materials or dangerous materials in the mail. For those items, I simply wait until I get to the start of my adventure, and then I find a local outfitter or a big box store, and I buy a can of fuel, I buy bear spray if I need it, or anything that, you know, I probably shouldn't be shipping. Uh, in 2020, I went out to do a big section of the AT, and that's how I did it. I put all of my stuff in a box, I sent it out to a town that I knew I was gonna be in before starting the trip. I went to the post office, I picked it up, and voila, there were my stakes, my trekking pole, my knife, my trowel, everything that I could not fly with, so I kept it simple. Another thing that I've done to keep it simple is by picking up cheaper alternatives uh, where I'm going. So for instance, when I went to Nepal last year, I didn't need a tent, so tent stakes were out, but I did need a trekking pole, I did need a knife, so I didn't fly with anything. It was a really far distance to ship that. So I just waited till I got to Nepal and I visited one of the small, we'll call it off-brand outfitters in Kathmandu. I actually picked up a trekking pole, an off-brand, uh, basically a bootleg black diamond trekking pole for $10. I picked up a small knife for probably $5. And then I went to do my trek up through the Himalayas. When I was done with my hike, I came back to Kathmandu, actually went back to the same small little store and just donated those items back to the store. That way I didn't have to worry about getting rid of them. I didn't have to worry about flying with them or sending them home. Now, this isn't always gonna be the option and obviously it depends on where you're going to. Uh, there are a lot of different countries that if you are going to be doing an adventure in, you can pick up pretty cheap off-brand gear. So that is an option. So that's what I do with backpacking gear and hiking gear. But what about bike packing gear? For me, this would be the exception of having to check your gear. Obviously, I can't bring it on board and put it in the overhead. So for this, I always check all of my gear at one time. Now, you can do something like buy one of those super expensive, nice, plastic hard cases that you break your bike down in, you put it in, it's got padding and, and wheels and you can wheel it through the airport, but those things are crazy expensive. And then you deal with the logistical nightmare of figuring out where you're gonna store this box when you get to the location that you're gonna be starting the adventure at. Or maybe it is a case where you're starting in one point and you're ending in a completely different point. You gotta figure out how you're gonna get that box. So the thing that I do and that I see most people doing is by simply picking up a cheap cardboard bike box. Whenever bike shops get brand new bikes from the company, they ship them in these big cardboard boxes. So you can typically go into your local bike shop and ask them if they have a box. Tell them what size your bike is and about nine times out of 10, they're either gonna give it to you for free or they might sell it to you for like 10 or $20. Last year when I went to do my bike tour of Great Britain, starting down at Land's End in England and riding 800 miles up to John O'Groats, this is exactly what I did. I went down to my local bike shop, I asked them for a box, I told them what size my bike was, and then I broke my bike down. I took my front wheel off, I took my handlebars off, I took my pedals off, I packaged everything to kind of protect it from being banged around on a plane with some of the packaging that was already in the box from when the bike came from the factory, then I put all of my other gear inside the box. My helmet, my bags, my tent, all of my stabby things, <laughs> like my, my tent pole and my stakes, my trowel, everything that I could get in that box, I put it in there, I made sure it was nice and packed up, and then I checked it at the airport. I paid one price to check my box. When I got to England, I picked up my box, hauled it to my hostel that I was staying at for the night. I unpacked my bike and out in front of the hostel, I built my bike back up with the tools that I had. I put all my gear on it and then I simply threw the box away. So for me, using the 
disposable cardboard box that, like I said, most of the time is free from a bike shop is the best option. All right, so the third way that I typically fly with my gear is what I'm actually gonna be doing next month when I head to Europe to do the Tour de Mont Blanc. Before I do my hike, I'm actually headed over a week early to Switzerland to hang out with my buddy Fez that I finished the PCT with back in 2018. Fez has been living in Switzerland for the past two years, and I figured it was a perfect opportunity to go catch up and hang out with him in Switzerland, traveling around the country by train, eating some good food, seeing the sights, and just being a tourist. So obviously I'm gonna need my gear and my equipment and my clothes for the hike, but I don't wanna travel around Switzerland for a week and be a tourist and blend in with hiking shorts and a sun hoodie and looking like a piece of hiker trash. So I'm gonna want some regular clothes and typical traveling amenities. So for this trip, what do I bring on the plane? Well, I'm not going to need a tent, so tent stakes are out. Don't have to worry about that. I'm probably not gonna take my knife because it's not that type of a hike where I don't think that I'm gonna need my knife. And as far as a trekking pole goes, I will either borrow one from Fez or I'll simply buy one from an outfitter in Switzerland and then leave one with Fez. So I'm gonna need all of my gear and I'm gonna put all of that inside of my pack that's going on my back. I'll use this as my carry-on item and put it in the overhead bin. So I'm set on my hiking gear. But as far as my other stuff, all of my clothes, my other amenities, typically what I do is I take a second bag and use it as my personal item. Most airlines will allow you to fly with some sort of a personal item, which is typically a bag that is small enough to fit under the seat in front of you. All airlines are different in the size that they allow. Most international airlines though, it's a pretty decent size. What I typically use is something like a soft duffel bag. This allows me to put my other things like maybe a nice shirt, some pants, extra shoes, my toiletries, all in this bag. It kind of fits and it can squish and it can go under the seat. And then I can carry on both of my bags and not have to worry about checking a bag, not have to worry about sending myself anything through the mail. And I have all of my gear and all of my traveling amenities for basically two adventures in one. Now, when I go off to do my hike of the Tour de Mont Blanc, I'll just take my hiking gear, just my pack and my hiking clothes, and then all of my other stuff in my duffel bag, I will actually leave with my buddy Fez in Switzerland, simply because I'm gonna be flying in and out of the same airport. But you're like, I don't have a friend that lives in the place that I'm going to. What do I do then? Well, something I've done in the past, actually a lot in the last couple years, is I leave my everyday traveling stuff or my extra stuff at either a hotel, a hostel, or sometimes even an airport. Typically, whenever you do international travel, hotels and hostels and even airports will allow you to do short-term storage. They either have a storage room or they have storage lockers. A lot of times they will do it for free if you're planning on staying at the place again before your flight, or they might charge you a small fee just to put your stuff in a broom closet. They'll lock it up and then you're good to go. I've done this a ton of times and it's a really good option if you're flying in and out of the exact same airport. All right, so like I said, there are a ton of other great videos here on YouTube. If you're looking for tips and tricks on how to check your gear onto an airplane, these are just some of the things that I've done over the past handful of years, both internationally and domestically, to fly with my gear to where I don't have to check stuff. I can keep things simple, I can keep things cheap, and get all of my gear to the start of an adventure safely. Speaking of that, do you have any tips and tricks of what you've done to fly with your gear? Leave it down below and let us no, guys, I have a ton of new content coming out this year here on the channel. Not only am I gonna be doing some more of these tips and trick videos for general travel and adventure, 
I also have some new gear videos coming out and a bunch of short travel adventure films from some of the stuff I've done over the past two years and a bunch of the trips that I'm gonna be doing for the rest of this year. So hopefully you'll stick around, hopefully you'll check it all out and you'll dig what I'm gonna be bringing to the channel. I'm pretty excited to be making content again for you guys. I'm feeling very, very inspired. Uh, if you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you wanna support me and see extra bonus content from me, like a Monday morning video podcast every single week, uh, you can sign up for my Patreon account. I also share a ton of behind the scene looks at some of the gear that I'm developing at my company, Evolve Supply Co. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'll leave a link down below. I hope you're all very well. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.